Good evening. It became Britain's biggest slavery case and it involved a Midlands farm. A Stratford-upon-Avon farmer has given his first interview about how he unwittingly employed victims of modern-day slavery. They were supplied through an agency by a gang who tricked vulnerable people from Poland to England with the promise of a better life. At the start of our Focus on Farming Week, our rural affairs correspondent David Gregory Kumar has been investigating how it happened and what's being done to stop it happening again. Sandfields Farm near Stratford-upon-Avon grows produce for pretty much every major supermarket. At peak, we've got 700 seasonal staff in the business. But this farm was an unwitting part of the largest modern-day slavery network ever exposed in the UK. I regret the fact that we've you know, ended up with people in our business and you know, if we'd picked up on it at the time, we would have been able to help them. What has gone on is horrific. I'm really pleased that the police have got the prosecution through and the criminals being brought to justice. And these are the criminals responsible, an organised crime gang that promised 400 vulnerable people from Poland a better life in England. Instead, they were housed in squalor and their wages were taken by the gang. The question is, how did some of these slavery victims end up working here? Sandfields is proud of how it treats its foreign workers. In the field, the pickers have access to toilets with somewhere to wash their hand, and then there's a covered area where they can eat their lunch, stay out of the rain, all the sunshine, and there's access to drinking water as well. It's very good for us, for everybody. This is the reason we chime back all the time here. So how did this farm get caught out like this? You know, some of the individuals we ended up with in our business, um, they were only, one of them was only here for one day one day and the longest was here for a matter of a few weeks so it's very difficult over a short period of time to build that relationship with them. And the criminals know this so that's why they were focused on short-term agency staff rather than supplying long-term workers. But the agency supplying the people who turned out to be victims of slavery was actually licensed by the Gangmasters and Labour Abuse Authority, the GLAA, and they're the people whose job it is to tackle this problem. You had licensed this particular recruitment agency. Yes, uh, and we have obviously over a thousand licenses in uh, the agricultural sector and uh, the, those companies have to adhere to our licensing standards. What had happened there was that a worker had infiltrated that company uh, and was actually operating and recruiting workers, but those workers were actually all the people that were being traf trafficked by uh, her collaborators. Licence or not, in the end, it seems the buck stops with the farmers. We're investigating what happened and, you know, anything we learn from that, we will, you know, try and modify our systems for the future as we, as we continue to modify them anyway. But, you know, modern day slavery, unfortunately, it is out there. Sandfields is more vigilant than ever, but right now, on other farms in the Midlands, there will almost certainly be other victims of modern day slavery picking and packing the food we eat. And David joins us now from a different farm, this one in Worcestershire. Uh, David, what does it say if even a well-run farm gets caught out like this? It says, Mary, that farmers can't afford to let their guard down even for a moment when it comes to modern-day slavery. Now, as you said, we're on a different farm. We're in Worcestershire. These are apple trees behind me, and they belong to the farmer here, Ali Kappa, who's also chair of the NFU Horticulture Board. Ali, do we have any sense of how big the problem is? Is it getting worse? No, I don't think the problem is getting worse. I think farmers and growers work really hard to make sure that their labour is coming from legitimate sources. But criminals will take advantage. And right now we have shortages throughout the sector for seasonal workers. And that is when the sector gets taken advantage of. And what do you do on your farm to try and stop all this? So we work really hard to make sure that we interview workers, we check pay slips, we make sure that they're being paid what we think they should be being paid. We talk to them. Um, sometimes that's difficult because they don't always have a good, um, a good, good English language. But there are lots of ways that you can check. Um, we only work with registered labour providers. We make sure that they're on active checks. That's something that the Gangmasters Licensing Authority offers. So there's lots of different ways that we can make sure that workers are coming from the right sources. But when there are shortages in the sector, which we have right now, that's when we need proper policies from government to make sure that we can recruit from legitimate sources when you have shortages 
That's when criminals take advantage. Ali Kappa, thank you very much. And of course, the irony is that farming is quite well regulated. As farmers crack down on this sort of thing, these people just disappear into other parts of the economy, Mary. And David, throughout this week, um, here on Midlands Day and across the BBC, we're going to be focusing on farming. So what else are you going to be looking at? Tomorrow it is Brexit, and we're asking the question whether or not farmers are changing their minds. Whatever the circumstances is now, we've got to stick.